Glenn Edward Bo Skambeshla Jr. Shem Bekela, April 1, 1929 to November 17, 2006, was an American football player, coach, and athletics administrator. He served as the head football coach at Miami University from 1963 to 1968 and at the University of Michigan from 1969 to 1989, compiling a career record of 2 3 4 6 5 8. Only Nick Saban, Joe Paterno and Tom Osborne have recorded 200 victories in fewer games as a coach in major college football. In his 21 seasons as the head coach of the Michigan Wolverines, Skambeshla's teams amassed a record of 194-48-5 and won or shared 13 Big Ten Conference titles. Though his Michigan teams never won a national championship, in all but one season they finished ranked, and 16 times they placed in the final top 10 of both major polls. Skambeshla played college football as a tackle at Miami University, where in 1949 and 1950 he was coached by Woody Hayes, for whom he served as an assistant coach at Ohio State University in 1952 and from 1958 to 1962. In his first ten years at Michigan, Skambeshla's team squared off in a fierce rivalry against Hayes's Buckeyes squads. During that stretch in the Michigan-Ohio State football rivalry, dubbed the Ten-Year War, Hayes and Skambeshla's teams won or shared the Big Ten Conference crown every season and usually each placed in the national rankings. In 1988, Skambeshla assumed the role of athletic director at Michigan, succeeding Don Canham, the man who hired him as football coach in 1969. Skambeshla retired as head football coach after the 1989 season. His longtime assistants, Gary Mola and Lloyd Carr, helmed the team for the next 18 years. Skambeshla left the University of Michigan in 1990 to take a job as president of Major League Baseball's Detroit Tigers, which he held until 1992. He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame as a coach in 1993. During his later years, Skambeshla remained in southeast Michigan and hosted a sports radio show. He died in 2006 at the age of 77 on the eve of that year's Michigan Ohio State football game, a historic number no. one versus number no. two showdown. Topic: Early life. Skambeshla was born and raised in Barberton, Ohio, a suburb of Akron. His nickname, Bo, came from his sister's attempts to say "brother" when they were young children. Skambeshla's father was a firefighter. One of Skambeshla's seminal experiences was seeing his father refuse to accept a stolen copy of a civil service exam—despite the fact that the other applicant was reported to have received a stolen copy himself. Skambeshla's father took the exam without having received the answers, missed one more question than the other applicant, and did not receive the promotion he coveted. Skambeshla often told the story, saying the experience taught him more about integrity than any lecture ever could have. Hard work and integrity were two themes of Skambeshla's career. Skambeshla attended Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. He played football under two legendary, and completely different, coaches. Sid Gilman, his first coach at Miami, was an innovative offensive mind and one of the fathers of the modern passing game. His concepts helped to form the foundation for football's West Coast offense. Prior to Skambeshla's last season, Gilman departed to become head coach at the University of Cincinnati. He was replaced by the renowned and fiery Woody Hayes, who could not have been more unlike Gilman. Hayes embraced the run, eschewed the pass, and demanded tough, physical play from his linemen. Rather than innovation, Hayes stressed repetition. 
He wanted his players to run each play flawlessly. Over the next 40 years, Hayes' impact on his young protégé was clearly evident. Scambeschler graduated from Miami in 1951 and earned his master's degree at Ohio State University in 1952 while working as a graduate assistant coach under Hayes, who had become OSU's head coach. After a tour of duty in the U.S. Army, Scambeschler served as an assistant at Presbyterian College in 1954, followed by a year as freshman coach at Bowling Green. When Scambeschler's former college teammate Ara Paskian, Hayes' successor at Miami University, was hired as head coach at Northwestern in 1956, Scambeschler joined him and spent the next two seasons there as a defensive assistant. In 1958, Hayes hired Scambeschler to serve again on his staff at Ohio State. Scambeschler spent five more years at Ohio State and became one of Hayes' most trusted assistants. During that time the two cemented their lifelong friendship. Scambeschler was fond of recounting the number of times that Hayes fired him, only to send a graduate assistant to fetch him after tempers had calmed. Scambeschler, Hayes, Paskian, and several of their cradle of coaches. Compatriots are the subject of the book Fields of Honor, written by coach John Pont's niece, Sally Pont. <laughs> Miami University In 1963, Scambeschler returned to Miami University to become head coach of his alma mater. Over the next six seasons, Scambeschler led the Redhawks to a 4-0-1-7-3 record, winning a pair of Mid-American Conference titles and finishing second three times. The team's top season was 1966, as Miami went 9-1 overall. Miami's offense was led during those seasons by quarterback Cerny Kellerman and Bruce Matt. Topic: University of Michigan. Scambeschler became Michigan's 15th head coach after the 1968 season, succeeding Bump Elliott. He was hired in 15 minutes. It took athletic director Don Canham that long to sense the intensity, the enthusiasm of a man destined to be a winner. Besides a stellar record at Miami he also brought a unique five-man angle defense and a guarantee that he would make it work within five years. At Michigan, Scambeschler became one of college football's greatest coaches. He won a school record 194 games, lost only 48, and tied five for a winning percentage of .796. His teams never posted a losing season. In Big Ten Conference play, he had a record of 1-4-3-2-4-3 for a winning percentage of .850. His Michigan teams won or shared 13 Big Ten titles and made 10 Rose Bowl appearances. His 9-6-1-6-3 record during the 1970s was the best of any Division I coach. Scambeschler led the Wolverines to a total of 17 bowl games, going 5–12 in 21 years, placing him ninth in all-time bowl appearances. He was voted National Coach of the Year in 1969 by both the American Football Coaches Association and the Football Writers Association of America. Scambeschler's greatest victory came in his first season, when he led the Wolverines to an upset victory over a standout Ohio State team coached by his old mentor, Woody Hayes. Hayes' Buckeyes dominated the series during the late 1950s and for most of the 1960s as Michigan fielded a number of uncharacteristically mediocre teams. 
In 1968, the year before Skambeshla became head coach, Hayes made it clear how far Michigan had fallen behind its traditional rival, when the Wolverines lost 50–14. At the end of the game, Hayes decided to pursue a two-point conversion rather than a simple kick for an extra point. Legend has it that when Hayes was asked why he went for two, he responded, because they wouldn't let me go for three. The embarrassment of that outcome set the stage for the 1969 rematch. In 1969, the Buckeyes entered the game as defending national champions and 17 point favorites with the top ranking in the country and a 22 game winning streak. Hayes' 1969 squad included five first team All Americans. But Skambeshla's 7 2 Wolverines dominated a team Hayes later considered his best, beating Ohio State 24 12. In a single afternoon, Skambeshla and his charges resurrected Michigan's football tradition and returned the program among college football's elite. Both Skambeshla and Hayes, who remained personal friends until Hayes' death in 1987, agreed it was Hayes' best team and Skambeshla's biggest victory. Michigan's win over Ohio State in 1969 is considered to be one of the greatest upsets in college football history and the most significant win for a Michigan team ever. The Wolverines and Buckeyes proceeded to engage in a fierce Ten-year war. That elevated an already storied Michigan-Ohio State football rivalry into one of college football's greatest annual grudge matches. For ten years the two dominated the Big Ten, splitting ten conference titles between them and finishing second eight times. They were so dominant that the Big Ten earned a nickname of Big Two, Little Eight. During that era. After a decade of memorable on-field stratagems, sideline antics, and locker room psychological ploys, Skambeshla held a 5-4-1 advantage. Skambeshla's tenure at Michigan was also notable for the renewal of Michigan's rivalry with Notre Dame. Despite the fact that the two schools are located within 200 miles of one another and ranked first per second in both total wins and winning percentage in college football, they had not played each other since the 1940s. The resurrection of the rivalry was facilitated by Skambeshla's close friendship with Ara Paskian, Notre Dame's coach at the time of Bo's arrival. Skambeshla, however, never had a chance to coach against his former mentor, as scheduling commitments prevented the series from resuming until 1978, after Paskian had left Notre Dame and was succeeded by Dan Devine. Despite Skambeshla's success during the regular season, he was less successful in bowl games. His overall record was 5–12, which includes a 2–8 record in the Rose Bowl. The Wolverines lost the 1970 Rose Bowl, their first bowl game under Skambeshla, while he was hospitalized after suffering a heart attack on the previous day. Michigan went on to lose their next six bowl games before winning five of the last ten they played under Skambeshla. The only four of his 21 Michigan teams that did not play in a bowl, however, were a shade short of perfection, losing a total of three games while compiling a combined record of 1 March 39. One loss was by three points and a second was lost in the last seconds when a 33-yard FG attempt was ruled to be just wide of the goalposts. Following the 1980 season, Skambeshla gained the first of his two Rose Bowl victories by beating the Washington Huskies. The 1980 Michigan team featured the talents of Anthony Carter, a three-time consensus All-American. In 1980 Michigan stumbled early in the season, losing two of its first three games. As a result of the two losses, Michigan was eliminated from consideration for college football's national championship, finishing fourth in the end-of-season polls. But Skambeshla maintained that his first Rose Bowl champions were the country's best team by season's end. 
They did not allow a touchdown over the course of their last five games, giving up nine points total. Perhaps spurred by Carter's success, Skombeshla's teams began to pass more during the 1980s, but Skombeshla never completely shed his image as a run first offensive coach. At the same time, his teams continued to enjoy consistent success throughout the decade. Jim Harbour, a future NFL All-Pro quarterback and current head coach of the University of Michigan, led Skombeshla's 1985 team to a 1 January 10 record, a 27–23 win over Nebraska in the Fiesta Bowl, and a number 2 ranking in the final polls, the highest finish ever for one of Skombeshla's teams. Skombeshla's last two teams went to the Rose Bowl, splitting two games with USC. Skombeshla retired from coaching after the Rose Bowl in 1990. He decided to retire at the relatively young age of 60 because of his history of heart problems and was succeeded by Michigan's offensive coordinator Gary Moeller, whom he handpicked. Skombeshla was also the athletic director at Michigan from 1988 until early 1990. Just before the 1989 NCAA basketball tournament, men's basketball head coach Bill Frieder announced that he was taking the head coach position at Arizona State University, effective at the end of the season. Insisting on those in the program being dedicated to the school, Skombeshla immediately fired Frieder and appointed assistant basketball coach Steve Fisher as interim head coach, while famously announcing that, A Michigan man is going to coach a Michigan team in the NCAA tournament. The literal meaning of the Skombeshla's quote was that only a current, 100% committed university employee would coach the team, not Frieder, whose loyalties had just switched to Arizona State. Ironically, Frieder was an alumnus of Michigan, while Fisher was not. Fisher led Michigan to six straight victories in the tournament and the 1989 National Championship. Skombeshla witnessed the championship game, an 80-79 overtime cliffhanger versus Seton Hall, two days after his 60th birthday the semi-final victory over Big Ten rival Illinois was played on Skombeshla's birthday. Steve Fisher graciously submitted Bill Frieda's name to receive the championship ring, however someone, likely from Skombeshla's administration, removed his name. Skombeshla would coach Michigan's Rose Bowl team in 1990 while having secretly accepted the role of president for the Detroit Tigers, publicly announcing the hire after the game. Topic: <laughs> Those who stay will be champions. Skombeshla began his tenure as head coach at Michigan with a rallying cry to his players, "'Those who stay will be champions.'" This slogan foreshadowed the challenges Michigan football players would endure from the dramatic culture change initiated by Skombeshla, who emphasized toughness and introduced practices and conditioning far more rigorous than any of the players had been exposed to before. His first training camp in 1969 saw around 140 players enter but a mere 75 emerging from the grueling camp and choosing to embrace Skombeshla's system. Skombeshla's subsequent successes and legacy of propelling the Michigan football program to further national prominence immortalized his promise to his players after accepting the head coaching position at Michigan. Every Michigan football player who played for Bo Skombeshla and stayed at Michigan for four years left Michigan with at least one Big Ten championship ring. Furthermore, not once did any Michigan player under Bo endure a losing season during his tenure. As such, those who stay will be champions remains a beloved team slogan for the Michigan Wolverines and has been immortalized into the tradition and mythology of Michigan football. 
Topic offer from Texas A&M On January 15, 1982, Texas A&M offered Scambeshla nearly $3 million for 10 years, the richest contract in the history of college athletics at that time, to become the school's football coach and athletic director. Scambeshla turned it down. Frankly, I've come to the conclusion that there are things more important in this world than money, Scambeshla said. For that reason, I've decided to stay at Michigan. Topic: <laughs> After Michigan. From 1990 to 1992, Scambeshla was president of the Detroit Tigers of Major League Baseball. In 1991, he presided over the firing of Tigers longtime broadcaster Ernie Harwell. The move was decried by fans and the press. Management at the Tigers flagship radio station WJR later claimed responsibility for the sacking, but Scambeshla and club owner Tom Monaghan were denounced for the decision. Scambeshla was an opponent of female sports reporters in the men's locker room, defending Tigers pitcher Jack Morris, who told a female Detroit Free Press reporter in 1990. I don't talk to women when I'm naked unless they're on top of me or I'm on top of them." Scambeshla stated, "...no female member of my family would be inside a men's locker room regardless of their job description," and suggested, "...the whole thing was a scam orchestrated by you people to create a story." Scambeshla was fired by the Tigers in 1992, via fax. Scambeshla maintained an office at the University of Michigan's football facility, which is named Scambeshla Hall. Scambeshla's former assistants, Gary Moeller and Lloyd Carr followed him as head coach. Scambeshla was also active in numerous private charities. Scambeshla also hosted a pregame show on the Detroit ABC affiliate, WXYZ TV, along with sports anchor Don Shane named Big Ten Ticket. It was devoted to his analysis of the Wolverines, the Michigan State Spartans, and other Big Ten conference teams. On April 30, 2005, at Michigan's annual spring commencement, Scambeshla was awarded an honorary Doctor of Laws degree. <laughs> <laughs> Health problems Scambeshla had a long history of heart trouble. On December 31, 1969, the eve of his first Rose Bowl appearance, he suffered a heart attack, and had another in 1987 while he happened to be at University of Michigan Medical Center for tests. He had two quadruple heart bypass operations, the first in 1976 and the second following his second heart attack. During a taping of the WXYZ TV program Big Ten Ticket in late October 2006, Scambeshla collapsed and was taken to the hospital. Following the episode, he had a heart pacemaker implanted into his chest to regulate his heartbeat. As late as a week before his death, he had stated his doctors were still adjusting the device, which covered about half his chest. Topic. Death On Thursday, November 16, 2006, and though he was not feeling well, Scambeshla attended the funeral of his close friend and 1971 quarterback, Tom Slade. That night, Bo delivered his traditional Thursday night pep talk before the Ohio State game. According to the Detroit News, Bo's speech was not about Ohio State, the Big Ten title or a national championship. 
The whole speech was about Tom Slade and how, if the players worked hard, listened to their coaches and stuck together as teammates, one day they might be as good a Michigan man as Slade. That was the goal at Michigan, not national championships." Skambeshla finished by exhorting them to remember, "...the team, the team, the team." The next day, on November 17, 2006, Skambeshla collapsed in a bathroom at WXYZ TV just prior to the taping of Big Ten Ticket around 9.15 a.m. He was taken to Providence Hospital in Southfield, Michigan where he was pronounced dead at 11.43 a.m. At a press conference a few hours after his death, it was reported by his doctor, Dr. Kim Eagle of the University of Michigan Health System, that his death was from the terminal stage of heart disease, where the heart muscle itself does not respond to the pacemaker, a common cause of death for persons afflicted with severe heart disease. Skambeshla died the day before one of the biggest games in the history of the Michigan-Ohio State football rivalry. He was not planning to attend the November 18 game in Columbus, because his doctors had advised him that attending the game might be too much stress for his heart. Instead, Bo and his wife, Kathy, had packed the car and had planned to drive to suburban Dayton, Ohio to watch the game with his former Miami teammate and best friend, Bill Gunlock. The university's regents approved a plan for the renovation and expansion of Michigan Stadium on the day of Skambeshla's death. On November 21, 2006, the University of Michigan held a memorial service for Skambeshla in Michigan Stadium. Approximately 20,000 fans, ex-players and coaches including former Skambeshla player and assistant coach and then LSU head football coach Les Miles turned out during the middle of a workday to pay their respects to Skambeshla and to celebrate his life. Former Ohio State head coaches Earl Bruce and John Cooper attended, along with then Ohio State head coach Jim Tressel and his entire staff. Skambeshla is interred at Forest Hill Cemetery in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Before his death, Skambeshla had agreed to be an honorary pallbearer for former Michigan Wolverine and University of Michigan alumnus President Gerald Ford. Ford, himself a center at Michigan in the 1930s, died on December 26, 2006. A pew inside Washington National Cathedral was draped with a University of Michigan stadium blanket in Skambeshla's memory. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Personal life. After Skambeshla married Mildred Millie in 1968, he adopted her three sons, Donald, Chip, Jeffrey and Matthew. Skambeshla and Millie then had a son together, Glenn III Shami. <laughs> Head coaching record Topic Coaching Tree Played under Sid Gilman, Miami University, Woody Hayes, Miami University, coached under Doit Perry, Bowling Green, Ara Paskian, Northwestern University, Woody Hayes, Ohio State University, assistant coaches who became head coaches. Cam Cameron, Indiana, 1997-2001, Miami Dolphins, 2007. Lloyd Carr, Michigan, 1995-2007. Jack Harbour, Western Michigan, 1982-1986, Western Kentucky, 1989-2002. Bill McCartney, Colorado, 1982-1994. Dave McLean, Ball State, 1971-1977, Wisconsin, 1978-1985. 
Frank Maloney, Syracuse, 1974 to 1980. George Manns, Eastern Michigan, 1974-1975. Les Miles, Oklahoma State, 2001 to 2004. Louisiana State, 2005 to 2016. Kansas, 2019 present. Gary Moeller, Illinois, 1977 to 1979, Michigan, 1990 to 1994, Detroit Lions, 2000. Don Nalen, Bowling Green, 1968 to 1976, West Virginia, 1980 to 2000. Tom Reed, Miami, 1978 to 1982, NC. State 1983 to 1985 Paul Schudel, Ball State 1985 to 1994 Central Connecticut State 2001 to 2003 Larry Smith Chelaine 1976 to 1979 Arizona 1980 to 1986 Southern California 1987 to 1992 Missouri 1994 to 2000 Chuck Stobart, Toledo, 1977 to 1981; Utah, 1982 to 1984; Memphis State, 1989 to 1994; Bob Sutton, Army, 1991 to 1999; Elliot Uzalak, Western Michigan, 1975 to 1981; Navy, 1987 to 1989. Ron Vanderlinden, Maryland, 1997 to 2000. Jim Young, Arizona, 1973 to 1976. Purdue, 1977 to 1981. Army, 1983 to 1990. Former players who went on to become head coaches. Jim Harbour, San Diego, 2004 to 2006; Stanford, 2007 to 2010; San Francisco 49ers, 2011 to 2014; Michigan, 2015 present. Les Miles, Oklahoma State, 2001 to 2004; Louisiana State, 2005 to 2016; Kansas, 2019 present. Topic. See also List of college football coaches with 200 wins List of presidents of the American Football Coaches Association List of celebrities who own wineries and vineyards